He came home. He says, Judy, I want to tell you something. I want a divorce. I don't want to be the perfect husband. I just want to live a single life. But everything's going to be OK. And he laughed at me. I said, what is wrong with you? And that's when it started to fall apart. I did tell her I wanted a divorce, but I cannot remember anything about that day. It is a blur. There were no real signs. I just thought my husband was being challenged with mourning the death of his father. After I asked Judy for a divorce, I stayed five more months before I actually moved out. Danny had become very secretive. I hired a private investigator because I thought my husband was mentally ill. The private investigator told me that a woman had stayed the night at Danny's house. When Judy questioned me about the other woman, I did lie to her. He was furious. He was so upset, he pulled out of the driveway cussing me. Danny never cussed me. And that's when it really started going bad. Well, Judy says when she found out that Danny was having an affair, she raged in a way she never thought she was capable of. Judy came to the house, knocked on the door. I didn't let her come in because there was someone else there. I thought it was odd he wasn't answering the door, but his truck was there. I went into Danny's truck and retrieved his cell phone. I started reading all these text messages from the girl he was seeing. Love you, Tiger. Gonna be blonde tonight. I'm scared. You gonna hurt me? I was standing there reading these messages and Danny walked over to me and grabbed my arm and something in me just let loose. I just took my fist and beat my husband in his head. She did hit me quite a few times upside the head and in the face. I got back in the car and I left and went to a parking place and just cried and screamed. I called three people to let them know that if I go to jail, please come bail me out, because my husband will probably press charges against me. OK. I know why he's here. You want to put this back together? Absolutely. No question about no, it? No you, question. Whatever it takes, you want to put this back whatever together? Whatever it takes. Uh, even though you blew it up? Yes. OK. Why are you here? I need help. I look at him, and I, my heart loves him, but I'm so mad at him. So why did you do this? What happened? Did you just wake up stupid one morning? What, uh, what pretty happened? Pretty much, yes. Because that, that, uh, that's how you describe it, right? You say, uh, I, I don't know. I just. This, it, this, that feeling and mindset consumed me fairly quickly. Um, and I had no idea what, what a, the definition of a midlife crisis was at that time. Well, what is that? What, you said you didn't know what midlife crisis was. Um, I still don't know what that means. I hear you hear it a lot, you see it a lot, but what what is that? Uh, after the fact, after I'd read a lot of stuff she had put on the on the computer, it, it's def, it's the, it's a life changing events like getting out of a routine or a schedule, uh, doing things you normally would not do. At, at that point, you just you you said you wanted to live every day like it was your last. That's the <clears> feeling <throat> that you get. Day. Days weren't long enough, he said. Right. Well, they were, but they were long enough to get a mistress, and yours were long enough to get a PI. Yes. So that that did eventually come. Yes. Right. Now, y you left her a note. Tell me about this note. At that point, I had begged my husband, threw myself at him, trying to save the marriage, and I come home one day, and there was this note. Well, I, I have the note. Um, you said at one point you said, "quote I'm moving on with my life." I don't need your permission. I will do the divorce with or without your he permission. He did say that. I suggest you move forward. Find a friend or whatever. Protect yourself and be careful. Did you have a girlfriend at that point? Uh, yes. Yes. This year? I did. Yes. I know because I left him a Valentine's card on the counter telling well, him that I still loved him. He threw it away in the trash. I have every card that he's ever given me, 33 years worth. When he asked me for a divorce, I told him he needed to get his testosterone levels checked. I just thought, <laughs> you know, maybe he's dipping. You know, women dip. They go up and down, and they dip. And I thought maybe Danny was dipping. I didn't know that a man could dip. <laughs> but he did. He was dipping. And I thought, well, we're going to find out. So I took him to his family part, you know, the family physician, yes. and he they did blood work, and that day I told the doctor, I said, there's something wrong with my husband. There's something wrong with him. He's dipping. Can't you help him, <laughs> you know? And she said, well, his blood 
tests come back okay, everything's okay, and that's when I told her that there was something terribly wrong with this man. Yeah. Because you don't stay married 31 years and live the beautiful life that we had, and all of a sudden, he's just ready to toss it in the trash and walk away from everything. His daughter, his grandchildren, me, his partner in life. This man worshiped the ground I walked on. We took baths together every night. <laughs> you don't do that. We did. You know, how many people can say they take a bath with their husband every night? Probably, uh, <laughs> we probably had a connection. Certainly not my wife. Well, <laughs> <laughs> I met a gentleman on Match.com. We had a phone conversation, and he did want to meet me. I walked up to him, embraced him, and I had not felt that way for a long time. It was a total instant attraction. My knees buckled when he grabbed me. This man changed everything. That first date was a wonderful week of my life. He took me away on vacation, and we just enjoyed each other's company. I came over to the house. Judy had left me a note on the counter that she had met someone and had gone away for the weekend. Something woke up inside of him, and he realized that his wife was no longer there. I did call her, crying to her on the phone, asking her to come back home to forgive me and telling her that I wanted her back in my life. When Danny found out that I was away with a man, he was going to drive to get me and make me come home. He was calling my family, he was calling me, and it got to the point where Lawrence told me to turn the phone off. I'm on vacation with another man because my husband threw me away like a piece of trash. He didn't want me anymore. Well, plot thickens. Um, so that was a big step for you to it go on a, a dating website. Big, it was. Because like you said, 33 years together, 30 years of marriage. Uh, then all of a sudden you're with a stranger. I had been waiting for 10 months. And it was to the point where I just could not do it anymore. I thought I had waited long enough. This man showed no emotion. He, he showed me that he wasn't going to come home. So when I decided to go on that website and go on a date, which is something I had not hardly ever done in my life because I'd been with Danny, it was something new and exciting. And this man, when I met this man, he was genuine. <clears throat> and I had, we met, and I, I actually, the day we met, that day he threw his driver's license up on the table. He said, take a picture of this, send it to your mother, your brother, your sister, I'm taking you away. And I said, no, you're not. We went to dinner, had a really long dinner. That evening, he says, so you're going to go away with me? I said, yeah, what time are you picking me up? <laughs> and he took me away. We had a beautiful time. And I immediate, immediately, this man just grabbed hold of my heart. I never wanted another man to touch me. I never wanted another man. I never wanted anybody else but Danny. Mm -hmm. You know, he's I, I all I wanted. I wasn't gone 10 months either. Well, it was, it was almost, it, it, it I was. I didn't move out until February. I know, but you yeah. asked for the but, divorce but it, in September. I was emotionally not Listen, there. I'm, I'm going to yeah. try to help you here, but okay. this ain't about the math, okay? <laughs> this is not about calendar math. Um, it sounded like 10 years to me. It might have been two months, but it was 10 months. Okay, was this the first man that you met? when you went on the dating site? No, I met one other gentleman for lunch. We had a, a, a lunch date and... Um, Didn't click? No, because it wasn't anything I was looking for. It wasn't, I wasn't looking for a husband or a lover or... I was looking to get out of the house to find a friendship. Well, was it, what was the difference between the first guy you met for lunch and the second guy you went away with? Well, the second guy I went away with, when I met him, my legs buckled. I just... <laughs> he grabbed the hold of me. He grabbed a hold of me when I got out of the car at the racetrack, and he just grabbed a hold of me and says, come on, girl, we're going to go in here and talk. And we spent the whole afternoon into the evening together. And, it, and it, I felt so safe. It, it, I just, it was a feeling I had not had for a very long time. Yeah. I mean, your legs just don't buckle when you meet people. <laughs> no. no. And I work around a lot of men, professional people. Yeah. So this is not anything that... This was normal. the first buckle. Absolutely, it was. <laughs> it was. Yeah. In two ways? Yes. <laughs> I mean, did, did you spend the weekend with him? I spent the week with him. The week? I did. Yeah. And Danny, he, um, when he found that letter, because I asked him to watch the house. Nobody knew that I was going anywhere except for my sister. 
and I left on a counter Lawrence's information on the counter in case I disappeared. Because you don't know when you go away with a man, you don't know if he's going to bring you back. Right. Uh, a couple months ago, I moved back into our home. We decided to try and fix our marriage. Everything was like normal. During those four days, it was like a honeymoon again. We were intimate every day. And then uh, four days later, she said she wasn't ready to do it yet. As long as I have those visions in my head of that other woman, I can't fix this. She still angry for what I had done and also had feelings for another person. So I continued living there, sleeping in another bedroom. She would continue to see him. Bringing Danny back into the home has really impaired my relationship with Lawrence. I don't let Lawrence pick me up at my house. If I go away with Lawrence, I meet him somewhere. You have to be respectful. Well, comment on that. Uh, that's, that's very painful to, to stay at home and watch that happen. Uh, but been I- been tortured since I let him move back in to see that I'm still living my life one but, day at a time. But I have a, I have but a never- You say it's respectful to go meet it's, your boyfriend down the street. Well, I, it, the way I look at this is Danny dissolved my marriage vows. I have a marriage certificate. I don't have a marriage. He dissolved the vows that we took before God and he dissolved them with his actions. So I don't have a marriage. I have a marriage certificate that holds me legally bound to him and all our assets together. But as for Lawrence coming and picking me up, I didn't want to disrespect Danny or hurt Danny. Danny is being tortured ever since he moved back into the house to see that Judy is up functioning, living her life, and moving on one day at a time. Judy can't take a week at a time, but Judy can do one day at a time. And as for Lawrence, Lawrence is willing to accept one day at a time. You know, he knows that there might not be a tomorrow for him. He wants me to be happy. You have unfinished emotional business with him. I do. You are still hugely pissed. I'm hugely pissed and I'm, you know, Dr. Phil, here's the thing. I've loved this man with all my heart. Sexually attracted to him after 33 years, can't get enough. You know, I'm so... <laughs> No, I, I, I'm I get sorry. It. I get it. Look, here's the thing. You, Lawrence, charming, fun, high risk guy, though, right? You recognize the high right. risk? I'm right. telling you, high risk. Okay, here you have unfinished emotional business. If you want to be happy and at peace this time next year, then you will make the investment of doing what I'm going to ask you to do. Give me 90 days to arrange some very specialized help for the two of y'all to work through where you are right now. If you go with Lawrence right now, you will spend the rest of your life wondering what it is that caused you to walk away from a 30-year family. Your daughter, the grandchildren, right. that, all of the things that, that y'all created together. And I, I, it's going to have to involve forgiving him. That doesn't mean you will forget it. you got to be willing to let that go. And you, there may be some things you, you may need a pound of flesh before you do that. There may be some things you need to work out. And I will arrange some very, just as our gift to y'all, I will arrange Thank some you. very specialized help to do this. Give me 90 days. Or if, you, or if it's 60 days, whatever the intensity is, but I need a period of time for you to finish this business and then look at him where you don't see that other woman. You see the man that you spent 33 years with that got dinner ready for you so you could watch me. <laughs> okay? If I arrange this for you, and I mean, I will start it right now. I mean, by the time y'all get back, well, you're in the air, this will be getting worked on for, for you to get this help it. and move forward. Will you give us that I time? Do. Now, there's a kicker. No Lawrence during that time. Okay. No Lawrence during that time. You got to right say. Now. Starting right now. You can't. You can talk to him. You can talk to him and tell him what you're going to do okay. and ask him to respect that period. But you can't. You never solve problems in a marriage by turning away from your partner, and, and you never s solve them by bringing in a third party. Okay. Okay. So will you do that? I will. I will. Fair enough. I will. Thank you. Okay. Fair enough. Thank you. Oh, absolutely. Okay. Do you have a story or a question for me? Click the link in the description and tell me what in the world is going on.